The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Wednesday, the 8th day of February, 2023. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by Medical Health's One Communications and Lindos. I'm Jamal Hartman. He's Larry Marshall Jr. And Tamara McHale will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Greetings, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm, 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 I'm okay. I, I did my walk this morning, coach. That's good stuff, good stuff. I must say I had a laugh, right, you know, if the audience really knew the the shock or, or, or the rush before we get it, yeah, eating something real quick, I'm eating something real quick. <laughs> it's just something to get me belly before we start. So I had a good laugh at that. Stuffing my banana. Hey, fuck, you, nah, seriously, I'm stuffing my banana, trying to get it done before I, <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hoping that it's all out of my mouth so I don't have to, you know, trip Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. It happens. Yeah, so a good walk this morning. Yeah, a good walk. Walk, walk the distance. So um, it's hard. It, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be very honest with you. It's knowing that I want to get out there and jog and run, and having to walk that same distance is hard. I'm. It's mentally. Yeah. I just want to get over with, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I'm but getting keep better. Yeah, keep better. Keep better. Yeah. So tomorrow I can do another five k, and because I had a break today. Yeah. 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 All right. See, I'm listening to coach and doctor, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm got them. I'm got them. I, I, I'm going to tell you, all, well, I'm going to tell you that, you know, coach gave me some advice like two years ago and he tells me probably every two couple months and went to my doctor the other day. She said, yeah, he, 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 that's exactly what you need to be doing. So it's not that I didn't believe him. Let me put it out there. It's not that I didn't believe him. There, there was a lesson in this that I said to the TDH crew. I said, each of us have something that can help the other lean on each other, trust each other. That's, that was the lesson in it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, greetings, everyone, and thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today. We've got Joshua Powell. This, I, we've had a lot of conversations about health and wellness so far in 2023, and this is another exciting one that I'm looking forward to. We're talking about health and wellness in the workplace, actually. So I think why I find this so interesting, and I use myself, for instance, I go to work with my big water jug right and people always like you don't get tired of running to the bathroom all day and then you know i was one of the first people in my last three jobs to have a stand-up desk right people think that's weird right so just different things whether it's posture or drinking water staying hydrated at work a lot of us a lot of us actually don't even consider the ergonomics of an office when we accept the job we think about pay and you know different kinds of benefits and perks. Yeah. One, I, I'll never forget when I was in college, we did almost a full course on ergonomics because it was an entrepreneurship class because if you have people working for you and you want to maintain a healthy um, employee um, base, yeah. then ergonomics was extremely important. So anyway, looking forward to this conversation with Joshua Powell. Um, Folks, the daily play is music today. So um, I, I picked one out of the hat. I know the answer to this one. So if Larry doesn't get this today, I, I, I think we should all be disappointed. Let's just say that. Um, very easy. I mean, Sanchez does pretty well at this. Sherry does pretty well at this. But I don't think we've tested 
any of the fellas on, on their music lately. So looking forward to that. And if you haven't already, make sure you're registered as a member of the TDH community. We are doing some crazy fun things this month. Just spoke with Shanti yesterday, confirmed some of the things we're doing. So you don't want to miss that. Fill out the application on our website or just hit the join button. And folks, don't forget, um, if you enjoy this show, if you really appreciate the work we do, you can always just give a $1, $2, $10, $20, just a donation, a gift of thanks when you're commenting in the comments. And we do appreciate all the people who do do that. It does mean a lot. Um, it does take a lot to do this. So if you're feeling generous, if you're so um, generous to that you want to give back to us and you want to keep these conversations going, um, we are open. So um, if you don't already, please follow us on all of our social media channels. We do share different content on each channel, so you don't want to miss different things that happen. Uh, we just had Michelle White and Faith DeRosa Gilks. They won something this week um, that was only on our Facebook channel. We share things, certain things only on our Instagram and then our LinkedIn and then our Twitter. So keep up with us on all the different channels that you're on. Good morning, Rashida. Godwin and his Luby says, uh, it's crazy that uh, that things that are best for us, we find hardest to do. Um, interesting, right? We find people know that eating vegetables are probably best for us, but we find it hard to eat vegetables consistently. Well, let's get into today's discussion before we uh, bring our guest on a bit later. Uh, so be, actually, actually, hold on. Before we start this show, got to pick a burn with Mr. Marshall over there. <laughs> he needs to admit on this damn show right now, after last night, who the greatest basketball of all time, play, greatest basketball player of all time is. Michael Jordan. Audience, he and I have been arguing about this since LeBron came in the league. Last night, anyway. last night LeBron James solidified, <clears throat> in my opinion, his number one status as he passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the most points in the history, in the history of basketball. I mean, unfortunately, Michael Jordan only played six seasons, so. I will ask you this question, right? Mm -hmm. Your life on the line. Who takes the last shot, Michael Jordan or LeBron? LeBron's hit more game winners. Uh, who? You didn't answer my question. I said LeBron. <laughs> answer my question. Look, the audience is agreeing with you. I, 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 they, they, they don't know no better anyway. You all pick Michael Jordan. You don't know that LeBron all day. I, I, that's my answer to your question, folks. Who you got, LeBron? Let's ask the audience before we get into discussion. Michael Jordan or LeBron? Who you got, Michael Jordan or LeBron? I'm, I'm LeBron all day. I think Kobe is better than LeBron. Yeah, and a lot of people say that. A lot of people say that. I think Kobe had a killer instinct. Yeah. Well, I've always said Kareem was the greatest. Kareem's accomplished more than any other player. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a Kareem guy, so I'm not yeah. gonna, you. So yes, Charles, to answer your question, Kareem was the greatest to me, yeah. not for the, his longevity, but what he won, both as in college and in fact, the NBA. Yeah, so he got the rules changed, different and, stuff like that. Yeah, Kareem was the greatest to me. Yes, yeah, so but as the great, right. as the great, as I finish off this. As the great Jada Kiss said, mm. the girl is for your name to be in the conversation because it's subjective. Exactly. Ex and there you go. That's it right there. It's subjective. It's, it's really our opinion. And honestly, I think Michael Jordan answered the question the best. Comparing different eras, like. Yeah, it's not fair. Christian Honor and Messi, or. Yeah. This, it's it's lady, splitting her. Like, it, it's, it's hard comparing eras. The games change, the rules change. Yeah. Um, they, the, you know, I remember Bill Hembury, the, many people know him as the BTA, former BTA CEO. He once played in the NFL and he, 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 him and I were talking one day and he said, you know, when he was playing with OJ up there, he's, he's like, play, you know, they weren't as big as they are now, right? So different eras um, is yeah. definitely a different thing. But it looks like the audience is all going with you. Um, yeah, they, 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 you know, they, they're all going with MJ. But you know what? But if you, go, if you were to ask Maya to take a pool on hers, they're all say LeBron. I, and I if was, you had people my dad's generation, they'll say Bill Russell or Bill Chamberlain. Yeah. Or, it's all subjective. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but I've been a Kareem guy. I, I was a Kareem guy. Um, but I think that Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, in my opinion, are two players that had this killer instinct. You just, you don't see it in basketball like yeah. those two. Yeah. I, honestly, I, I think those two players right there, 
what separated them from the rest is they are not afraid to put something on their back and say, if I lose, I lose. So yeah, I, lose. Yeah, I would agree. Let's get into today's conversation. So right now, I just want to give some background. So folks, if you don't know, um, well, hopefully you're not living on the rock. Uh, February in the United States is known as Black History Month, and it has origins dating back to 1915 when historian and author Dr. Carter G. Woodson founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. The organization now known as the Association for the Study of African-American Life and History um, through this organization, Dr. Woodson initiated the first Negro History Week in February of 1926. Dr. Woodson uh, selected the week in February that included the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, two key figures in the history of Black Americans. So I want to, the, basically the question, just in short, this is the question in short. What are your thoughts on Bermuda, a majority Black country like Bermuda, observing Black History Month, Ameri the United States of America's Black History Month. What are your thoughts on that? And be before we go to the audience, Larry, I'm just going to go to the Instagram post and just share some of the responses we got on Instagram. I've all, you all know me. If I've said it on this show before, um, I'll say it again today. I've been very public about it way before this show. I am not a fan of um, Black History Month. Um, I, I just am not. I think that it was great at the time, I think it was great, like immense more than, but at this point, we should be doing much more. But it's interesting that Bermuda tags along into something like this and plays into the racism that is the system that exists in Bermuda. So some of the responses real quickly were, uh, where are they? So what are your thoughts on Bermuda observing Black History Month? Um, First response, it's interesting that a majority black country chooses one month to highlight black history. Second, it should be year round. And a third, the same energy companies put into Pride Month need to do it for Black History Month. Um, so what are your thoughts? What, what are your thoughts on Bermuda observing Black History Month? Again, this is a thing that was started in the US. It's for black Americans, really, but Bermudians of course, just tag along to things that are happening in the U.S. a lot. But what are your thoughts on it? Uh, when I think of February, um, three things come to mind, and I don't know why. Um, one of my good friend's birthday is in February, and he actually turns 40. We all turn 40 this year, right? Um, and then I went to Elliot, and every year Elliot talked about February is Education Month mm. and Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Then I went to work on within education. So it always stuck. You know what I mean? I think I am, I, okay, from a, a educational point of view, having kids learn about like pop culture, black figures, black inventors, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, rather than the, the general ones, you know, to highlight them and for them to learn. Like if you're a P1 and you're learning about, uh, call, you know, some of the black inventors, that's mm -hmm. a that's a positive. I feel. Um, I I also think that I I think where you and I have have, have talked about before, it checks a box for the commercialization for for the the corporate world to for the lack of a better term. Uh, okay, we did this for Black History Month. We uh, put this in our newspaper. We put it all across all our socials. It checks the box. We're doing our part to help race relations. Mm -hmm. And I think that gets to your point where we're saying, uh, well, we should be doing much more. Mm -hmm. As it state goes with Bermuda, I don't necessarily have a strong position in, well, we shouldn't be doing it, you know what I mean, because of what I previously spoke, or if we don't. If you want to do it all year, yes. I think we would just want to see where has the progress came since that. I'm okay with Bermuda kind of piggybacking on the U.S. idea. I mean, they do it for everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that, I think that's where initially where I stand with this. Yeah. What are your thoughts, audience? I, I Here's the thing with me in Black history. Um, I think it has been commercialized. Uh, there, there's a meme that went around some years ago um, and it was basically a, a meme with a, a, a black kid and a young white child, and basically saying, "This is this month's not for me; it's for you, right?" 
I, again, I think when it was started, when it was created, it had some, it, it was necessary, right? It was necessary back in the early 1900s. But at this point, I think it's been commercialized, right? You see the videos. Um, Charlemagne, I swear he does a donkey of the day every year of some company or some school doing fried chicken, watermelon, and like to honor black history. Like it's all, every year some, some company does something disrespectful, right? Um, I, I would love to see us highlight black history. Um, not just, I'm not going to overdo it and say daily, but I think it should be a natural part of our conversations. No, some people may say, well, it's a perfect time to learn. Okay, no. When was Malcolm X um, assassinated? Well, let's celebrate around that week. Let's celebrate around his birthday, <laughs> right? Michael Jordan retired on this day. Let's celebrate Michael Jordan around this time. Let's celebrate, you know, um, who was the first uh, black nurse in Bermuda? Was it Juanita Ferbert? Let's celebrate um, ner um, nurse Juanita Fer I think that's her name, Ferbert Week, right? Like, I think we have to take it into our own hands because right yeah. now, I feel like it's it's not ours. It's been commercialized, right? And to me, it it I think it keeps us in a box like, yeah, this is your month, the shortest month of the year, right? This is your month. And we, we honored you to, to, to your point, checked off that box. Now let's go on to the women in March. Yes. And, and I, to, to, to piggyback on what you just said, I, I actually have done here. Um, I think heritage month for us is May. And that's a perfect opportunity for us to really highlight some of the, not the other Bermudians, but black Bermudians within our heritage, because the thing with Black History, it very little gets, I'm sorry, Black History Month, very little gets sprinkled to the Bermudians. You know what I mean? Like we, it's George Washington Carver, Martin Luther King, like, you know what I mean? There's same that is, that's American. You know, we didn't even go to Africa. Um, around cut match, mm -hmm. we, we know it's Emancipation Day. A lot of people don't even really know it is Emancipation Day. We can do so much more to celebrate Blacks around that time. And I think, like you said, we have to take it into our own hands to to kind of make it that every or, or that that natural conversation. Whereas with Black History Month, it's, oh, well, it's Black History Month, we can do this. Yeah. And it's just like, well, it, it's, and it's become so disingenuous, I think, that it just becomes like a, a lot of Black people are over it. Yeah. I, I, I And that's why I say, you know, I, I, I say to, you know, backstage to the TDA's crew. Like, I, I don't speak about Black History Month. I'm not a fan of Black History Month. I think, you know, this show, um, we, we discuss history, Black history, and if you catch it, our daily plays, you know, it's it may be subtle, but it's not subtle. It's direct. The conversations reflect, right? But it's, it's really about, you know, that old saying, that cliche about being the change you want to see, right? Um, look, <laughs> At the end of the day, I just want us to be better. I think we think because things existed for so long and we grew up embracing them that we must continue to celebrate, honor, and respect them as is. Things yeah. evolve and change. And what Larry just said about emancipation, we talk about being one of the first countries to have an official vacation for emancipation day. I mean, you know, day off, holiday, right? For emancipation. To me, celebrating that entire week of emancipation festivities would be better than Black history, right? But you're celebrating emancipation. Again, May, Heritage Month, celebrating all who have made Bermuda what, what it is during that time, right? Yeah. We have National Heroes Time. I just think it's so much more than to just piggyback on a country that's only, what, 13% Black? Yeah. Right? versus a country that's 60% black, there, we, at some point we have got to start understanding that we in Bermuda, you don't face the same issues that they do in the US. Let's go to the comments. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Bermuda uh, observing Black History Month? Um, Sam Cut Place says we are black 365 days of the year. There should be a learning all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rashida Godwin says I am black history 365 all year and not just February. Um, Charles H. Uh, Jeffers II says, I don't think 
Black History Month is just for Black Americans. That Black History Month particularly is, as Charles, I just read, um, that um, basically it, the two key figures in history of Black America um, created it for the United States of America, like African Americans. That's what it was created for. The UK also has a Black History Month, which I think is in October, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's October. Me if I'm wrong. So no, it is for that is for Black Americans. What what, what I'm what the point that we're making, and I don't want to be lost, is we need to we're celebrating something that's not for us. Let's it's not for us. It's not. Yeah. Can you to, to continue your comment? It's also to educate the uninformed about the contributions of blacks as it's part of American Bermuda history. It should be integrated in history. Um, again, it should not be one month. I, I don't think we need to jump on the look. I've been in the U.S. half my life, Charles. You spent probably majority of your life in the U.S. I see no reason a majority black country like Bermuda should be celebrating the United States as black history. We shouldn't be tying it in. And there are people. And I think she's in the comments. We shared a comment like Rashida Godwin, who were really trying to change that. Yeah. And I, I partly get where he's coming from. Uh, but I, I do understand where you're saying, um, you know, just this condense of one month, especially when it seems muddy, what have done. And mm -hmm. then also, uh, has that helped race relations in that country? No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um... Ignis Lewis, define your thoughts on Black history. If you have a stance, make it clear. Your thoughts are very unclear. Black history is not for us. It's meant to teach others about us and yep. should be year round. Yeah, as I said, it's it's not. I mean, that meme showed it clearly. It's it's Black history is for others. It's not for Black people. It's not for, it's not for us. You know, it's, it's, it's not. Um, and that's why I'm saying. I don't think we should jump on this thing. Again, this show is Black history. We have people, oh, you know, again, people say, oh, well, you have black people, white people, you have everybody on it. Yeah, we do. We do. But we don't choose a month or a week to educate people on blackness or what we know about it. And I, I must say, I'm, I'm okay with it being a month where it's highlighted. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think the problem is, is that most black people that I know feel that it's it's Black History Month, we get it, we do this, and now we wash our hands and we ain't got to worry about it till next year. You know what I mean? I think we need to add to it because do we get rid of it? Shouldn't it be highlighted in the schools hmm. or forget February? We never mentioned that it's Black History Month again. I don't think we're saying that, but yeah. it, it, it should be more than what it is now. I, I think the biggest issue is the commercialization of it for me, and I want to emphasize what you said is ticking that box. I think that's what annoys me more than anything. And again, you give black people February, you give women March, and you chuck those buckets. You give the LGBT people in the US June, and you, it's, it's just like, oh, we're chucking that corporate box. This is my problem with corporate social responsibility and charity and all this. It, it really doesn't benefit the people that they're using. As Ines Lewis just said, it's not for us. No, it's not for us. They're going to use us. It's just no different from culture. They will use it. For, to further their game. But anyway, let's go. We've got to bring Tamara in for the news. We've got Joshua Powell. We're talking health and wellness, folks. Uh, Renee Simmons says, I'm a member of African History Group Online, global for uh, people of African descent, and learn something new every day, 365 days a year. There you go. There you go. Um, many other John, Black history should be known by all races. Unfortunately, the education system is geared towards preparing for international examinations. Black, black history is not a part of those studies, <laughs> especially in Florida. Um, <laughs> says, I must say the African history group is for any and everyone, but to discuss only African history globally. All right, let's bring Tamara in because we, we've got to ask Jamaica, right? Let's, let's find out if Jamaica has Black History Month. Good morning, everybody. Greetings, madame. How are you? Good I'm morning. doing fabulous. Hey, 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 morning, morning. All right, so so speak to us. Does Jamaica celebrate? I didn't even know that you all had a different Labor Day until we were talking back in September. You know, you said, I think your Labor Day was in May or something? Yeah, our Labor Day is in May. Generally, yeah. I think like the 23rd or so. Okay, so you all don't really typically like Bermuda jump on American holidays and uh, or, or, you know, 
observations like this, but um, does Jamaica like have, have a Black History Month like the U.S.? Not like the U.S. Like we actually, there's some people who acknowledge it, but like nationally, uh, February is actually Reggae Month in Jamaica, not Black History Month. See, I can appreciate we're, we're predominantly like a Black nation, so we celebrate all things Reggae in February, like Bob Marley, Dennis Brown, music, mm -hmm. the culture, yeah. So we don't really celebrate Black History Month. So, and that's, I think that's my point right there. That I think that's my overall point. Yeah. Where, where's Bermuda's niche and that piece of history to celebrate rather than jumping on the um, African-American Black history then? And that's what I think Heritage Month, I would like Heritage Month mm -hmm. to become like that. I think it, to, with respect to youth and sport, um, not uh, culture and affairs, they do their best. I'm not trying to dawn nobody, but I would just like to see that blow up more where Heritage Month is is this big, huge thing in Bermuda and not just the, the holiday. Yeah. And I, I, I hope everyone who was into the conversation earlier had opinions, heard what she just said. They celebrate Reggae Month. That's the idea. And it ties into what Larry is saying in terms of heritage. But I won't take any more time. Tamara, how's we how are we looking in the news today? All right. Good morning again, everyone. This is the Daily Hour News Break for today, Wednesday, February 8th, brought to you by the People's Pharmacy. So in the news today, firefighters in Bermuda have taken their complaints about staffing levels to an employment tribunal, arguing the manpower at Clearwater Fire Station often left them unable to safely operate both a fire truck and an ambulance. According to the Gazette, the Bermuda Fire Service Association urged the employment and labor relations tribunal to make an order that they should only operate the ambulance when they have sufficient staff to run both vehicles understood to be six people. The group also called for an order that the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service should consult with them before making future agreements. Interesting, always something going on. I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna share an opinion. Yes, yeah. I am. always something going on. That's my opinion. Okay. In other news, the Bermuda Tourism Authority, BTA, is relaunching its in-person lunch and learn series for 2023. So according to Bern News, a spokesperson said that the goal of the series is to provide the local community with the latest marketing trends and consumer insights gleaned from their visitor exit survey and focus groups on best practices in delivering optimal experiences for visitors. They note that the organization has renewed its push for community involvement in the tourism industry, as early reports indicate that Bermuda is expected to have an influx of visitors in the rapidly approaching summer season. So the first of the series starts tomorrow, and it's actually going to be held at the BTS Bermuda's office. So tomorrow's topic is looking at the tourism standards and training. Hold on two seconds, because you all know I keep um, dictionary. I've got my dictionary on my phone. I have the app now, so just want to look up, because you said influx of visitors, um, an influx of tourists. Um. So here's the opinion on this piece. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, like, I mean... I'm <sighs> just quoting the beauty. No, no, I know. I, 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 okay, I'm going to leave it alone, because they think I pick on them. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> You just did. <laughs> All right. And moving on. So just before Beyonce won her record breaking Grammy Award on Sunday, her rapper and business mogul and billionaire husband, Jay-Z, closed a mega deal with Bacardi. So, you know, we had a representative on yesterday. So ending a business feud that threatened to spill into the Bermuda Supreme Court. He agreed to a reported multi-billion dollar deal with the Sprint Company headquartered on Pitts Bay Road surrounding the valuation of Ducey, the premium con cognac sorry, that they co-owned. And up until the announcement, a bitter dispute was with the lawyers. So they previously had shared a 50-50 ownership of the brand since 2011. But a few months ago, they had a falling out. But this agreement now is billed as marking the launch of the next chapter of Ducey and sees Bacardi acquiring a majority interest in the multi-billion dollar brand, while Jay-Z will reportedly also retain a significant ownership stake. Oh, Everybody's cool. friends. Everybody's friends again. Yeah, congratulations to him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Indeed. So in some other regional news here in Jamaica, following backlash since the February 1 implementation of the Road Traffic Act and regulations, the government made several concessions on Tuesday, including scrapping the requirement for children to be restrained in special seats in public passenger vehicles. So pretty much child seats in public passenger vehicles like taxis. There will also be a three month window for additional amendments to the act. Taxi drivers across the island have been protesting, especially um, more this week against the provisions, refusing in some cases to transport children for fear of being ticketed. Mm. So yeah, so the Minister of Transport, Audley Shaw, announced the changes yesterday. Quick question. I, I see you mentioned taxi. Um, do they have like Uber and Lyft in Jamaica? So they have Uber, but Uber is pretty recent. Like we've not had it a long time. So and like majority of the population doesn't necessarily, for those who don't drive, they mm -hmm. don't really use Uber because it's more expensive as mm -hmm. opposed to taking what we call route taxes, which can take up to like several persons at a time. Okay, and I asked because I think we just had some issues, people um, talking about cabs in Bermuda, and now I see taxes in Jamaica, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know, it's, it's just interesting that I was excited driving on the highway one Saturday night, and I was just like, wow, a taxi, and I looked again, and it's another taxi, and I guess a flight just got in, but I had not seen actual taxis like that in a very long time, so. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have a lot of taxis out here. Mm -hmm. And wrapping it up, finally, in Trinidad and Tobago, so as Carnival approaches, the caution is watch all your wine. <laughs> so revelers are upset following the publication of rules and regulations for the upcoming 2023 Carnival Monday and Tuesday. Titled Carnival Regulations 2023, Band leaders were curious about rules such as a person shall not sing or recite any lewd or offensive song or indulge in behavior or gestures which are immoral, lewd or offensive. Another regulation that got band leaders upset was a person shall drive any motor vehicle when masked or facially disguised and or travel in any motor vehicle when masked or facially disguised. So they're pretty much upset about it and they're asking how is this going to be addressed? Mm. And they're saying that the laws are draconian because carnival is when people normally free. Up. Exactly. So, well, according to the regulations by the police, anyone violating these rules during the period is liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding 1000 TT dollars, which is about 150 US dollars mm. and and to imprisonment for six months. Mm, yeah, it, it's the six month prison sentence, it got me. But, um, no. but I mean, no disrespect to Soka, I love me some Soka music, but um, no lewd lyrics or- a lot of, uh, a lot of these songs contain that, right? Exactly. What, what, what kind of carnival? Uh, anyway, how's the weather looking? Am I good? Exactly. So that's why they're upset. All right. Well, in the weather in Bermuda today, it's going to be a mix of sun and cloud, according to the Bermuda Weather Service, and also winds northwesterly going to be a bit moderate. Mm -hmm. Here in Jamaica, it's not like really sunny. It's isolated showers across sections of northern parishes, but otherwise partly cloudy conditions. All righty. Um, what we got days of the year, bro? Uh, this week is actually congenital heart defect awareness week um you know we've done a lot of things health related on the daily hour and i thought you know this would be a good time to bring this to light mm -hmm. and just to you know bring awareness to uh, a issue that affects a lot of people you know healthy heart is something that uh we can take for granted and with those that do have uh, a heart defect it affects them so Shout out to everyone who's working in that field and looking to bring awareness and raise funds. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for that. Tomorrow you have a wonderful day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Bye. All, All right. right. I'm Mikhail, folks. If you appreciated this morning's discussion and that news break information, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Do not go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. Come back. We've got Joshua Powell. We're talking about health and wellness, especially in the workspace. So you don't want to miss this. Get your questions and your comments ready.
People's ACW, located at King Edward VII Memorial Hospital, carries over-the-counter medicines, toys, cards, and even toiletries. Our knowledgeable staff are there whether you're at emergency, visiting family, or a member of BHB staff, to show you our best even when you're feeling your worst. People's ACW, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Wake up in the morning with enough coffee to keep you running throughout the entire day. Your pet at home deserves the best. Stock up on dog food to keep your puppy happy. Need a quick tasty lunch at home? Your chicken nuggets will be jumping right out of the freezer. What's a movie night without popcorn? You can never have too much. Lindo's Next Level. Why go anyplace else? Mom celebrating her 70th birthday next month. Have you noticed her age is catching up with her? Yeah. Plus, she's having a hard time getting up and around like she's used to. I would sure hate to see her fall. At Medical House Limited, we can help make life situations easier. We have electric beds, motorized scooters, bath stools, walkers, you name it. Mom's been real good to us. We'll get her birthday and Christmas gifts from Medical House. Medical House has relocated next to the Dandy Town Field. Number 6, Bakery Lane, Pembroke. Telephone, 292-3622. All righty, welcome back to The Big Show, Larry Marshall, Jr. I'm Jamal Hartman. It's The Daily Hour brought to you by Medical House. One Communications, Windows, and People's Pharmacy. Uh, folks, don't forget, make sure you go on our website, thedailyhour.com, register to become a member of the TDH community, or just hit the join button if you're tuned in on YouTube. Um, you don't want to miss some of the things we have coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, I mean, I would rather you shop with, you know, myself than Sandra. She, she's got expensive taste. So I'll keep it down for you. But uh, you can shop with either of us and um, get some things that you enjoy. So uh, don't forget, just go sign up, register and hang out with us um, during the month of February. Without further ado, let's bring our guest for today. We've got Joshua Paul. We're talking about health and wellness. Let's give him a warm TDH welcome, folks. Here we go. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for having me as no well. No problem. No problem. No problem. A uh, bit behind, but we're going to get to this conversation because it's one of my favorite, com it's become one of my favorite conversations anytime we talk about health and wellness. And as Larry mentioned just now before we went to break, we've pretty much, this show has become Bermuda's go-to for health and wellness conversations uh, since the turn of the new year. But before we get into it, just, just tell us a bit about your background and what it is that you do, Joshua. Yeah, so uh, my name is Joshua Powell. I was born and raised in Bermuda, um, and I've been in the maritime industry ever since I was young, um, 16 years old, um, and that facilitated me to actually get my degree in the maritime industry through marine and ports, and I studied in the UK, um, and I was also worldwide on ships, um, traveling and, and studying, which gave me a great perspective on, on different cultures and how they lived. and and um, even different nutrition and lifestyles that they had. Um, and then in 2017 is when I took my health very seriously. And I went from about 300, 300 pounds um, down to 200 pounds. So a really big transformation there. Um, and I did that through proper nutrition and through training, um, functional fitness at Lifetime Fitness. Um, and that was a great experience there. And now I live in the north of Sweden close to the Arctic Circle where my partner and I um, have a wellness company and we um, have clients that we coach through nutrition and through fitness um, programs as well as facilitate um, workshops here just to get people to connect to themselves and also to connect to nature and the surroundings. Um, so that's what we're, we're up to now. Real quick, congratulations first off. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, um, thank you. <laughs> what? Uh, just going to follow up to what you just said. Um, what was that? What was the moment? You know, everyone has a moment where they um, just change their diet and change their, their, their lifestyle. And, you know, what, what was the moment that you said, okay, I'm 300 pounds. I need to do something differently. I think for me, it was realizing that all these fab diets and stuff weren't the way to go. It was me at the end of the day, like my decisions and my discipline that was going to get me to where I wanted to be. And I, I have the saying that, that stuck with me, and it's, I'd rather have the discomfort of discipline than the discomfort of failure or pain 
Um, so that, that was a really big um, thing that was a switch for me in my mindset. Um, uh, interesting uh, and very interesting. And, and again, congratulations. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, discipline is the key. It, it, yeah. it, it, it's the key to, to it all. Um, let's talk about um, just healthy and, and, and work, right? As I mentioned earlier, um, you know, when we apply for a job or we start a job or we go to work, many of us always have money top of mind, right? Like how much are we being paid? Am I worth what we're being paid? Maybe some health benefits in terms of insurance or different perks, but very few of us actually think about the ergonomics, right? Mm -hmm. Very few of us even notice. And I, I, I'm speaking from experience where my last three jobs, I've had a stand-up desk and it was looked at as weird to a lot of people, especially dating back to like 2014 when I got my first one. Um, I know many people who sit down to work every day, right? How important is posture to our well-being? Posture is, I'd say, very, uh, very important for our well-being because it, it teaches us how to properly use and work with gravity with our muscles instead of our muscular, or sorry, instead of our skeletal system, um, oftentimes. Um, the pressure is on our skeletal system, but transferring that and building that awareness to put your posture into your muscular system is very important. And it can affect things like your digestion, your breathing, which ultimately works up the line to how you think, your clarity and your emotions. So I think that posture is, is very important um, for you to, to work at your optimal um, state. Mm. Nutrition and hydration can be very challenging for some in the workplace and maintain the stuff. And um, Jamal mentioned earlier on in the in the show about the hydration piece and the, the restroom. And, um, you know, I worked around but mostly women and they often talk about the, the challenges with hydration is the restroom, if it's a, a restroom that they like, all of that stuff, and they won't do it. To be honest, I drink most of my water first thing in the morning, but when I do the daily hour, I have to cut back because <laughs> I can't be running to the restroom for an hour, right? Um, so what are some tips to help people stay on track with the, you know, suggested daily intake for nutrition? But let's touch on this hydration piece because I think it really, we just heard, let's drink water and, and you know, drink it eight ounces and that's it. But it really becomes a challenge for people because of the restroom issue. Mm. Yeah, de definitely. Like you said, I, I, I believe, or my practice as well, is to have most of my water in the morning. Um, our bodies are made up of 60 to 80% of water, so it's a really big uh, percentage and hydration for our organs to work, for our brain to work as well. Um, so for my suggestion would definitely be have most of your water in the morning, um, as well as have a or bring an awareness to the um, quality of your water. Um, and it sounds uh, interesting, but when you have your water, kind of put intentions into that water. Um, water does hold information. So instead of kind of on the go, drinking as much as you can, kind of put an intention that this water is going to hydrate me and, and, and give me the tools that I need to, to have a great day. Um, and as for the workplace, as, as you said, it is um, quite hard if you have to keep on getting up um, out, of the, out of your chair and stuff. But, maybe look at it instead of having to get up, that can be kind of like an exercise snack. You get up every 20 minutes, 30 minutes to use the bathroom. It also helps you to check your posture, to fix that, to stand up, to get some blood to your legs as well. So they can all be kind of tied in each other um, with that, um, especially in Bermuda in hotter climates, you need more water. Um, so that's really something, but yeah, I say tie it all in, you know, having good posture, getting a bit of a break, um, for your body and um, yeah yeah um with the general nutrition piece what are some advice um you know because i know with planning uh most of it is discipline as you spoke on and then we're mm -hmm. talking about planning uh your meals and whatnot any tips on to how people can stay on track with with the food part yeah, meal prep. Like you said, that's that's so important. That saved me. I've done that since 2017. Dedicating that two to three hours on a Sunday or a Monday to 
to plan your meals out, to cook them, um, freeze them, however, and then you have prepared healthy meals for you during the week um, is important. Another big one for me was snacking. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a snacker, so it was so easy to go to the gas station and grab, you know, kind of a easy option of a snack. But what really helped me was having snacks readily available or in your desk. So you have a healthy snack, an apple or, you know, homemade kind of raw bars or something. Um, so I think that's a big part of it. And speaking of consumption, um, really ensuring that you have an organic diet or as organic as you can. Um, unfortunately, today there are a lot of processed food options, which are easy and cheap. But if you can have an organic um, food intake, that's, that's ideal, that's optimal. Um, and not only what you consume in your mouth, but as well, what you consume in your mind is a big part of it. Um, with modern day as well, there's all these distractions with social media, with news and things going on around the world. But nutrition is an amalgamation of everything, like what you consume as soon as you wake up, you know, is it gonna be healthy things that help you during the day or is it gonna be social media, looking into other people's lives kind of thing. So I feel like this idea of nutrition is all encompassing with what you eat and also what you consume mentally and emotionally. Um, so that's always a, a good tip. Yeah, I must say, um, I started doing a couple of years ago, cutting up eight ounces of raw vegetables and I snack on that. And that's yeah. one thing of snacks. Um, I usually do it at work. I, when I'm off, I don't, which I'm trying to change because that's a good way to get my guaranteed um, source of vegetables. It's really more than what um, I guess is kind of recommended because I do have vegetables at other times also. Uh, I think we want to spend a bit of time talking about this next topic, which is stress. Um, mm. It's a huge thing. We can have major health, which can cause major health complications. Um, it comes with the job. Um, what techniques do you suggest to help manage stress in the workplace? Yeah, stress is a big one. And before I do get into that, I'd like to, um, if, if it's okay with you guys, we'll do uh, just a few of um, here so all the viewers as well if you're willing and able just roll your shoulders back take one hand over your chest and take the other hand over the stomach doesn't matter what hand roll the shoulders back and just take a breath just a deep breath in and out close your eyes take another deep breath in and out Nice, one more deep breath in and lift your shoulders up as you inhale. Shoulders to your ears, deeply in, and then exhale, drop the shoulders down. Good. And that's a simple exercise. Um, coming to the breath, I feel like uh, with us not being so present, you know, with, with work and having to have deadlines and things to do. Um, it can be easy to get wrapped up in this stress. And with stress comes a low cycle of breathing. You know, a lot of people, they tend to breathe up here. But when you are able to bring awareness to your breathing and bring consciousness to your breathing, that is really one of the best tips um, that I can give is through the breath. And like we did just now, a deep breath into the stomach. So kind of taking that time, stepping away from your desk, your computer, putting the phone down, having that moment with yourself, you know, put your hands on your body somewhere, close your eyes, roll your posture, you know, roll your shoulders back for your posture, and just take a deep breath. And that's always a great check-in, um, conscious breathing. Another great one is nasal breathing, um, which is very underestimated and it's a, a thousand year old practice and that's basically just sealing your lips and just breathing through your nose in and out of your nose and i feel like if you take that five to 20 seconds to do a few breaths um, it can have tremendous impacts on on how you're going to go about the next you know few hours of your day um, so that's a big one as well there's a concept called hormesis um, and basically it's about giving ourselves small hormetic stresses. Um, now there's bad stress, which what we hold on to and take into everyday life, or there's good stressors, which is this hormetic stress, things like exercise, 
which is really great. You know, we have an hour session. Our body is going through this hormetic stress, um, breath work, as we did, um, as well as cold exposure, um, which and hot exposure. We have that in Bermuda, but cold exposure. And I know a lot of locals like the May 24th go for a swim, but you have the um, the availability and the capability, you know, less than a mile away, Bermuda, right? It's so easy to get to a beach. So hop in the water. And I know that fear can arise and there can be a resistance. Nah, it's too cold. But pushing into that resistance can really help you to handle with stress in everyday life much better. So introducing these small hormetic stressors um, is really helpful. And, and this is what I do here in the Arctic. I swim uh, multiple times a week in one degree water, which is 32 Fahrenheit, so just on the point of freezing. Um, and I go for about two to five minutes. And it's incredible how it helps me to handle stress in other situations. Um, so yeah, get in the water and breathe. Beats, yeah. beats one of those, what they call them, the ice baths, right? Beats, beats yeah. one of those. But um, let me show you. I've been in an ice bath once. It was torture getting in. Yeah. But I felt like I had a new bottom half when I got up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that the first five seconds. You get in, you're like, you're very resistant. Your body doesn't want to get uncomfortable, right? But once you're in, you like said, it's, it's amazing. So the entire time, I struggled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, for Joshua, please send them through. Um, be before you go, I just want to re you know, revisit everything we've discussed. And I want you, everyone to leave her having an understanding of what, you know, we speak about wellness a lot, but just what wellness actually is to you. But also, you know, you spoke about discipline probably being one of the most important components, but how can the average person, you know, I mean, you know, let's just be honest. Most people are, don't like their jobs, right? So most people are going to a place they don't want to go because they need to support themselves, right? The price of the necessities that they deem healthy, they feel are out of reach, right? So mm -hmm. that's stress, more stress right there. And then a lot of them, you know, I just read 10% of Americans um, have a side hustle or a gig because 100,000 in the US is not enough to make, you know, a living anymore, right? So with all that said, how can people cultivate uh, wellness in the times that we're living in? That's a great question. And I feel like it's, uh, for me, it's about changing the mindset of what wellness is. Um, it can be misconstrued that wellness is a state of being, you know, like, okay, I'm well now, now what kind of thing. But wellness to me or a mindset that's helped me is that it's always like a constant evolution. The only constant is growth in, in life. So I think kind of focusing on the discipline and realizing that there's freedom in that discipline. And from that discipline, you will cultivate a state of wellness, which will be ever evolving. Um, so I think it's all in the mind and your mindset is your, your greatest asset. Um, there's, there's countless quotes that say, you know, we are what we think and, um, go, and so on. So I think really cultivating a healthy mindset, um, pushing into the passion is a really big one as well. As you said, it is hard when things are so money driven and that is reality. You know, we need to have one foot on the ground. We need to pay for groceries, pay for bills, you know, pay for kids, schooling, etc. cetera. Um, but always carving out that time for your wellness, whether that be through training, through going for a swim, through taking a few breaths for yourself, always taking that time for yourself to cultivate your life force. Because at the end of the day, whenever you're feeling stuck or feeling overwhelmed or anxious, the best thing to come back to is self, to our life force. You know, take a few breaths and taking that can really help you calm down and see things in a different perspective or a different light, um, which can kind of help you feel better and help everyone around you feel better. So yeah, thinking of it like as wellness is constantly changing constantly evolving being able to go into these states of anxiety and then come out of them and come into the calm and then back and forth and it's all all about a flow indeed indeed um tamara says um uh thank you that felt good read the breathing um exercise and shikarina she said thank you for the breathing exercise um Trevor and Charlie has a question for you your views on intermittent fasting Okay, yes, that's a, that's a good one. Intermittent fasting. I think it's very healthy because we as humans can become so reliant on food 
And it's interesting, once our beings or our body does not have food in our system, we can tune into the wisdom of our body, um, a wisdom of our mind and things like that. So I feel like fasting away from food, you're able to really get some clarity in your mind. You can feel parts of your body that may need more stretching or more love put into them, uh, whatever that looks like. So I, I'm a big believer of intermittent fasting, even um, detoxing, so detoxifying. My partner and I just did a five-day detox, just fruit and vegetables for five days, lots of water, lots of yoga, stretching and breath work, and it was incredible. The first two days was a little rough, you know, some emotions came up. Um, but after the, the clarity that we had, it was like we were kind of tuned into a higher self of, of, of some sorts, kind of give, being able to make decisions better. And, and it, it was really interesting, almost like a different wisdom. So yeah, intermittent fasting, any kind of fasting is very healthy. Um, the whole breakfast, lunch, and dinner idea um, in Western culture it has become quite the norm. So I feel like going back to our indigenous ancestors mm -hmm. and hunter gatherer diets is very healthy to help us just tune in to ourselves, tune into our wisdom. I definitely recommend it. I, I agree. I, I, I've, I've never, I, I want to say it's been about 10 years. I ditched the whole norms of the breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, yeah. I, I just don't think we, we give enough to our bodies to be rewarded with that, that, the amount of calories in each meal, because I mean, there are people who have, you think of breakfast, right? You're eating a, so many calories for breakfast that you've eaten for two days sometimes, right? And yeah. then how certain desserts have become breakfast over the years in, in many cultures. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've followed a few people where they say that the, um, their largest meal is lunch. And then at dinner, they have, something light because you're closer to going to bed at that time. I'm no expert at this, but I just, you know, I'm not a big breakfast guy. I would eat a fruit or a juice in the morning and that's it. But I know people, they have a full big meal and then they have another meal and another meal. And I'm just like, yeah. it's, it's not because they know it's what's in their best interest health wise. It's because it was normalized. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. Tradition or tradition. Yeah, exactly. So kind of coming out of that, and, and I like to look at uh, nutrition as, as an investment as well. So whenever I have a meal, that meal is investing in kind of three parts of my life. The first is short term. So I'm going to get some good energy from this meal. You know, I'm going to feel good in my muscles. If I go to the gym, this meal is going to give me fuel. Then a midterm is how I look. You know, so this meal is going to make my hair look good, make my skin feel good, my eyes, my breath, et cetera. And then a long-term investment with this meal is it's going to give me the freedom from disease, you know? So I think eating for longevity, um, eating for the moment as well, but eating for longevity is always a good way to look at it. Um, and as you said, yeah, kind of going against those, not going against, but redefining those traditions is, is, yeah. is quite important and see what feels right for you. You know, like you said, you have your juice in the morning and that works for you. Um, some others might have an apple, some others might not. And, and kind of taking it into your own hands, um, I feel like there can be a truth that's outsourced to so many things and so much research and, and science, but feel it for yourself. Take it into your own hands is, is really a, a big thing and cultivate those healthy habits. And I'd like to ask the viewers a question. Uh, what is a healthy habit that you have? Mm, interesting. You yeah. have first, Brock. What you got? A healthy habit that I have? <clears throat> It depends if I'm training, obviously. Um, that, but I would definitely say my I drink a good bit of water. Very awesome. seldom, I I feel where I haven't drank enough water. Most days, I drink more than enough water. Hmm. This, I'm about to run through about two more days as soon as we get off the show. <laughs> it's interesting. I was going to say the same, and I, I've I've been a person like this who's had a big water jug from. I mean, I was laughed at in 2003 when I was working at Argus in one summer um, because I always liked drinking a lot of water like that. But I would say that's a healthy habit of mine as well, ensuring mm -hmm. that I get my water intake. But I've learned something this morning from both of you, right? Is getting my water intake in the morning. I used to feel like if I drank it all in the morning, then what am I gonna have in the afternoon? That's how I used to think. Jamal, mm -hmm. you can always drink more water. Let's go to the yeah. audience real quickly. We have a, lot, mm -hmm. a couple of questions and people answering your question, Josh. Um, Tamara McKill, she's asking, um, how to control hormones which sometimes affect weight gain? 
Hmm, that's a good one. So with hormones, um, my partner and I have been doing a lot of research into this. I think the first step is tracking your cycle, um, understanding what stages of your cycle you're in and then what foods can help support you in that stage. Um, so the ones that we've studied, there's four stages of a female's uh, cycle. And I think really tuning into yourself, um, starting with a journal and tracking your cycle. Um, from the first day to your menstruation and really feeling through those days. If you have emotions, write it down. If you have physical sensations as well, write it down. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely start by doing that. And then you can give me a, a, a personal message and we can talk more about it um, from there. But start by learning your own cycle um, for your hormone balance is, is the first step. All right. Um, Ines Luby is asking, um, what do you think about training where you don't eat before or during? What is the real reason for that practice? That's highly individual, I'd say. So I'm the type that I have a two hour mark before I train. Well, I'll have something slight, you know, like a oatmeal or something like that. And then I'll train two hours later. But my partner, as an example, she can eat 10 minutes before she trains. Um, so I think it's all highly individual. Make sure that you are fueled. Um, see what works for you. Some are morning early risers, they like to train in the morning, some are lunch, some are afternoon. Uh, but making sure that you are fueled, having clean carbs, ideally, and proteins before you train is ideal. And then some sort of fat and protein afterwards. Um, usually if you have fat before you train, it can take a little longer to digest in your system. So it might sit there and disrupt your system. So make sure proteins, carbs before you train, and then fats and protein after is my suggestion. Yeah. All righty. Um, Amber Kloss asking, hi, Josh, what is the difference between functional fitness and traditional fitness training? So functional fitness is a great question. Functional fitness is basically using and incorporating them into training. Um, traditional fitness models kind of lock down the whole movement system. They're great. Don't get me wrong, but they lock down the whole movement system. Like when we got onto machines at the gym and stuff, Usually our spine is supported, our back is supported, and then we're working our legs or we're working a chest press, um, which is great to isolate the muscle, um, but functional fitness is more using the whole motor unit. So starting from your core, making sure that's engaged, make sure your posture is set, and then I'm gonna work on my legs or my chest or something like that. So I feel like functional fitness brings a human, more human element um, into training. All righty. And it's got some answers to your questions. Some good habits. Ebony Souza says stretching morning and night, water yes. intake. Nice. Um, Chica Reina says water and 18 six. If, six. What's, if. what's Okay. Ratio, maybe? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe fasting, intermittent fasting, 18 hours without food. Yeah. Okay. Oh. See, see, okay. you all know these terminologies. <laughs> and it says eating my dark leafy green vegetables at least three days a week. Yes, good, good. Um, and Renee Simmons, she says, I don't eat red meat and drink water constantly. Most, re most recently, more sparkling water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think getting creative with it, creative with the water. Like I said, I've had a boring yeah. water. Have a sparkle or add some berries to it. Add some, yep. some you know, Cucumber, lemon. Things. Lemon, yeah, that's good too, definitely. Well, I'm, I'm about to go have my oatmeal. Josh, how can people get in touch with you if they'd like to, um, you know, learn more, maybe follow you? Um, you know, I don't know if you're doing things online that they can learn from, but let us let the audience know how they can um, connect with yeah, you. Yeah, you can get in touch with me um, via my Instagram, which I'm mainly on, Health Coach Joshua, at Health Coach Joshua. Um, through there, send me a message. I also have some contact details on there. Um, and yeah, follow me. And I, I post my daily routines and really stressing it as more not telling you what to do, but more of my strategies of what I do. And you can learn from it, you can try it for yourself. Um, Health Coach Joshua on Instagram, Joshua Powell on Facebook. And yeah, get in touch if you have any questions. All right, Joshua Paul, thank you so much. We appreciate you, my thank brother. You. And um, if ever we can be of assistance, please just reach out. I will, thank you guys very much. Have a good day. Uh, have a great one. All right. All right. All right, folks, if you found that conversation with Joshua helpful, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share that kind of information. Hopefully that breathing exercise was helpful for everyone as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. It was a good one. Um, stick with us. Going to take a, a quick break, our last break. Come back. We will uh, do the daily play and wrap it up. Stick with us. A lot happens around your home. That is why at One Communications, we have introduced affordable security and video monitoring because everyone should be able to afford to protect their family. 
Anytime, from anywhere, One Home Security keeps you connected and puts security in your hands with an easy to use smartphone app to control everything. Home security is important to keep you and your family safe. Motion activated cameras around your home and security monitoring within create a complete security system providing protection both inside and outside your home. Professional monitoring means that there's someone on call with 24 seven protection to notify the authorities and help keep you and your loved ones safe. We are dedicated to whole home protection with indoor and outdoor cameras, smart door locks, motion sensors, and more so you'll always be connected to what matters most. With professional installation, no upfront hardware fees, and low monthly rates, because keeping your family safe should be affordable for everyone. Total home video monitoring and security, there's no better way to protect your home than with One Home Security. All right, thanks again to Joshua Powell. A lot of good information, good, great conversation, folks. So please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Um, and uh, thanks again to One Communications, People's Pharmacy, Medical House, and Lindos for ensuring we can have these conversations with people like Joshua. T time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. Rep, are you ready? I am, sir. All right, here we go, folks. Help him out. He may need your help for this one. Or not. Or not. Or not. Let's see. Here we go. Why Clef said he'll be gone until when? November. Uh, wow, was it that easy? Yeah, that was easy. That was easy, folks. Was it that and easy? I'm not folks? even a music. I'm not even a music person. But my yeah. goodness! All right. Well, on that note, let's wrap it up. I guess it was that easy. Uh, final thoughts: Black History being a month in Bermuda, celebrating the United States Black History Month in Bermuda, and then obviously the conversation with Joshua Powell. Uh, in reference to the Black History um, Month and the Bermuda's part in it, I'm I'm okay with it with certain things. I definitely would like to see it more personalized and made for Bermuda and moved away from the, you know, checking of the box type of event that it is. Um, as far as our conversation with Josh, um, taking in what, what you know, a, a lot of the stuff he talked about, I kind of knew, but it's always good to just hear it again and, and, and get it going. Those deep breathing exercises for stress really do help. Um, my wife does it with my son and I see him now actually putting it into place and, and you know, it, it, it's helping, you know, at times. So, you know, let's just really look to put into practice some of the conversations that we have, especially as it relates to this health. So definitely thankful to Josh for, for, for sharing with us. Yeah. Uh, as far as the black history thing, look, folks, you can celebrate what you want. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not against people celebrating it. What I'm again, I don't like about it is that we allow this month to be commercialized and we actually act as if, okay, this is it. No, it's in our hands. We can do much more. We can celebrate that. We can make every month black history, but it's all on us. You know, I, I said um, in December, I believe it was, that I was so disappointed that my younger cousins, black males in their 20s, had never heard of Bermuda Technical Institute. That's what I'm talking about right there. So I think we have a responsibility that we need to take a bit more seriously when it comes to Black history and um, understand that maybe Black History Month, the American Black History Month in February, could be a boost to what we can do for Bermuda and Bermudians. Um, as far as Joshua Paul, I appreciate these kind of conversations all the time, health, wellness, especially people at work. You know, we, we get so stressed. We're driving to work in traffic. That stresses us out, right? We don't even realize that. Sitting in traffic, we get there. So again, majority of people don't like the, where they work. They may love their job. Some don't like their job, may, may not like the company. Some do like their company, then the bosses. And then the deadlines, right? Folks, we accept it as life. But we cannot allow these things to kill us slowly. Find peace within the conversation that was had with Joshua. There are some solutions. Bro, have you got some daily inspiration for us? I do. And this is from an unknown author or unknown spokesman. Healthy is an outfit that looks different on everybody. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Folks. No one fits no one size fits all, right? Yeah. And just because someone may be bigger doesn't mean that they're healthier. Doesn't yeah. mean just because someone someone is smaller doesn't mean that they're healthier. Yeah. Just because someone has better looking muscles doesn't mean that they're healthier. Doesn't have a look. Folks, don't forget, make sure you register to become a member of the TDH community. Go on the website, fill out the application. If you don't want to do that, just hit the join button on our YouTube channel. Very easy to do. Um, we've got a lot of things coming up this month, uh, within the next two weeks, actually. So if you want to be a part of these things, um, you want to be, you know, hang out with some cool people like, you know, Sancha and Larry and Maya and them, oh, hit us up. All right. So thanks again for making us part of your daily routine. Thanks. Really appreciate um, our sponsors. I can't thank them enough. Medical Health One Communications, um, uh, Lindos and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. Um, as always, we appreciate you. We love you. And we are so thankful um, that you continue to make us a part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back again tomorrow to do this with you again. Yeah, he's Larry Marshall Jr. I'm Jamal Hartman, my friends. Please do make it a safe and a great day because we are out. Peace.